before we start today, we want to apologise for how long it's taken to get this episode out. We have been so busy working on the new Word Cracker. It has been a gigantic project. It has swallowed you whole, oh, hasn't it, mate? It has, and, and it's been a bigger project than I thought it would be, you know, when we first started out on it. So currently the online Word Cracker has, you know, all of the morphemes that come with the Word Cracking package. Um, and it has a whole lot of lesson presets. So That's if you right. want to teach a safe end pattern or a particular spelling rule, there's a preset there. You press a button and up come all the tiles and the morphemes you need, along with teacher notes on how to teach that lesson. For, for those teachers that are just getting their head around teaching morphology. Yeah, yeah. they're trying to hold people's hands yeah. through that whole process and, and support kids to learn it. Um, but we're taking it really to the next level it now. It is going neck level. Oh, it, it is. And... I don't even think I could list all of the new features in the Word Cracker. I mean, this was always the idea yeah. to add these features. Um, but I suppose the big ones would be the addition of literally hundreds, I think over a thousand new morphemes yeah. for teachers to work with. So yeah. the original Cracker has around 70 morphemes. Yeah. And we really now have literally over a thousand morphemes. And we have smashed the Greek and Latin roots, haven't we? Yeah. All with their definitions and their origins inbuilt to the cracker. Um, so that really opens the scope of use for the word cracker, you know, wide open. It sure does. And what we're really hoping is that people can start using it not just for introducing morphology, but yeah. as a resource throughout school, you know, primary school and secondary. I think we've taken the leap from what you might call a basic or an introductory morphology teaching tool to an advanced morphology teaching tool, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. And we have included, so we've scoured the Australian Curriculum we have. Glossary. <laughs> yes. And we have manually gone in and broken down every key word in all of the subject areas in the Curriculum Glossary and done a morphemic analysis on them. And it's kind of been a fun nerd out, hasn't oh, it? it? Has. Like, I've um, learned so much. Yeah, yeah. I, um, we, you'll probably, listeners will remember we had Liana McCurry on. Uh, and it, uh, was it last episode? Yep. Yeah. And uh, Liana and I were nerding out, or actually all three of us were nerding out on the morphology of maths words. And uh, one of the ones I did was the, yeah, the pulling out maths words and breaking maths words up into bits and making those tricky decisions about does the morphemic analysis help a student remember this particular word or does it hinder? Yep. But just sitting, we've both been in front of spreadsheets, just yep. just having Edam <laughs> online open on one tab, uh, the, the the spreadsheet in front of us. What have yep. you, you've been relying heavily uh, on, uh, Wiktionary. on Wiktionary too. Yeah, Wiktionary yes. is an amazing resource. There's a whole lot and there's a dictionary of affixes out there. It, that's which, right. It doesn't have bases and roots, but it has prefixes and suffixes and all the definitions on them, like a huge library of them. Because anyone listening who's, who, who, is, you know, a commonly looking at words going, can I pull it apart? There's no one formula. It, you kind of get better at it, but it, it's not like dealing with pieces no. of Lego, is it? No, uh, pulling words apart into morphemes. It's really tricky. Like I find, you know, Edam Online is a brilliant resource and so is Wiktionary, but, you know, I find this stuff really difficult, which, which a lot of people do, but... You know, sometimes I read those Adam Online descriptions and I'm more confused than when I started. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> to when this word has come from. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so complicated. Um, and so, you know, this is why I think it's a valuable resource because who has time to do that? Oh, that's right. And so that's I think right. us taking the time to do that, and, you know, I can't say that we've probably got it perfectly, you know, because it is such a complicated thing, but taking the time to do that for teachers. Yes. So a teacher can now bring those curriculum words onto the cracker and the definitions and origins and examples of use of that word and similar words are right there for them at their fingertips. That's right. And another feature I've built in is the ability to look up live any word that you put onto the cracker. That's so a game that changer. you can look up on Edam Online or Wiktionary or you know, different resources to look at more detail about that morpheme or that word and the origin of it. And the whole time we've been doing it, I don't know about you, Michael, but I've sometimes pulled a word apart into what looks to be its morphemes and I've thought, I know someone is going to 
write in on the Word Cracker <laughs> website so and go, you've not nailed that. But the point is we do it in a way which gives students a, a chance to get those meaning parts a bit apart yes. so they can recognise those key meaning units, in other words, and they can build those those mental vocab trees, if you like, those yep. those vast networks. And that's all we're really aiming for. So, I, so I suppose it's an, apolo- it's an apology in advance to our advanced morphologists, Michael, that we yep. may not have got everything spot on but it's often a little bit subjective too isn't it it is and yeah. and you know and we've discussed this a lot you know from my perspective we're not building an online morphology resource no. like we're not trying to replace Adam online or no. dictionary or all of those excellent resources we're building a teaching tool and so in some cases for example you know if we, we've looked at words where you know we have a suffix that technically we could break it into two suffixes yeah but, and we know that technically that's accurate. Yeah. But we've thought, no, let's leave it as a single suffix because that's going to be easier for a kid to remember. That's right. And so really for us, it's about the best teaching practice yes. and making morphology accessible and useful vocabulary tool for kids and teachers rather than trying to be you know, an ultimate etymology resource because, you know, that's not what it's about. No, it's a, that's right. It's a teaching right. tool. And so, those of you who are already subscribed to um, to the Word Cracker, which is www.wordcracking.xyz, you're going to notice in the not too distant future, you're going to fire that up under your subscription and see a vastly different animal. Yeah, yeah. And I'm look, I'm really proud of it and terrified of it. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's been a gigantic project. Um, and there's way more to come soon. So we've got games on there. So yes. people who use the the word cracking process, you know, system, they would be, have been making their own games with their spinners, you know, which is a fair bit of work. Yeah, yeah. And so we've taken all that spinners now and made virtual versions of them. So you can bring them up in front of the class or a student that you're tutoring and it'll spin it for you. The word lists are there. So what I'm really hoping is that we're saving teachers a massive amount of work which by is, doing yeah. all this research, resource preparation for them and, and giving it to them so that they can focus on teaching. That's right. That's the goal, isn't it? Yep. Well, I suppose, Michael, we'd better get on with things because yeah. you and I could uh, we could nerd out on this stuff, you know. We could make 12 podcasts of yeah. nerding out on morphology. We've been nerding out on it for the last <laughs> 12 months. That's right. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our episode, Bill. Welcome to Discastia, a podcast for parents and teachers about the best way to support kids living with learning difficulties. My name's Michael Shanahan. And I'm Bill Hansbury. And I just have to say, I've witnessed Michael Shanahan's <laughs> sneaky run. <laughs> now, that means nothing to the listener, but I'm going to explain it to you. <laughs> I'm heading back from taking the photo. Michael said, oh, I need to do a sneaky run. No, he didn't even say it. He didn't even announce his sneaky run. He just did this sneaky run. It was a bit like on a cartoon where the hands come up anyway. Enough of that. Let's carry on. I'm Bill Hansbury, um, and before we introduce our guests, uh, we do need to acknowledge that we are casting to you today from the lands of the Ghana people, and we do want to pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge their deep connection to the land. And unfortunately, we also need to acknowledge that colonisation and dispossession are ongoing processes. Thank you, Bill. Today we are talking all about individual learning plans, what they are, why we need them, and how the system works. We've got two guests. We've got Sue Griffith and Lily Shanahan, my daughter. Welcome, Sue and Lily. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm working here at Fullerton House, um, providing support for students with dyslexia or dyscalculia, dysgraphia, whatever they need, um, learning supports. But I've come, I've been here a couple of years and I've come from a long career in the classroom in primary schools. And leadership, Sue? And some leadership. leadership, yes, yes. I did do a tiptoe into leadership and backed out. They just don't pay enough, do <laughs> they? They don't pay enough. <laughs> and Lily, welcome. Would Thank you like you. to introduce yourself? Um, so my name's Lily. I'm a year 12 at Sacred Heart College and I live with dyslexia and dyscalculia and have been on a learning plan for most of my individual learning plan for most of my schooling. Excellent. So we're going to have an expert from the teaching field and we're going to have a recipient of an individual learning plan. 
And it would be really interesting to see how the two mix and those two different perspectives. It will be. And then there's you and I, Michael. <laughs> and we'll just ask riveting, penetrating questions yeah, and keep the ball rolling. Because, you know, this is quite difficult. So my personal story is that I had no idea that such a thing existed until my kids were quite late in their schooling. Mm. And so I believe I went to a, say, South Australian Certificate of Education information evening for students who were um, going to receive special provisions mm. um, for exams. So I went along to that and the person who was presenting started talking about individual learning plan and saying, okay, so if your students had an individual learning plan, hopefully since primary school, then we've got a body of evidence that we can use and work with the school to work out what special provisions they would get in an exam, in a final exam. And I'm sitting there thinking, what? Mm. Individual learning plan? What's that? What is this you speak yeah, of? Yeah, and so it probably wasn't until early high school for my first child that I even heard of one, which is quite bizarre to me now, knowing what I know now, but I don't think these are necessarily things that everyone just automatically knows about or that schools would automatically offer mm. a student. Sadly, no. Yeah. I, so have a, I have a student currently... And I asked about the individual learning plan. The child's in year six and mum didn't know what I was talking about mm. and went to the school who also were a little less informative. Mm. So, uh, so from your perspective, what is an individual learning plan? So, let, so if you don't know what one is, maybe we should just you know, talk about it and say what it is. And it, perhaps the various names they yeah. come under. Yes, yeah. yes. So individual learning plans... Essentially, they're written for the adjustments to the curriculum an individual student needs to access the curriculum, and they're written really for students with a disability, usually diagnosed, um, in terms of learning mostly, but it can be physical difficulty, it could be a learning difficulty, which is comes under the cognitive mm -hmm. um, realm, it could also be a social-emotional so, you know, lots of our students with autism spectrum disorder, mm. um, anything where they will need an adjustment to the standard delivery of the curriculum is supposed to be what they're uh, written for. And in fact, some schools will talk about only students with a diagnosed disability have one of those, but there's something they call the imputed um, disability, which means there's a reasonable... Um, assumption and body of evidence to show this student is working in a space where they would need and likely could be diagnosed mm. with a disability. So you can just have a one plan or, a well, the individual learning plans can be called one plans often in... Um, That's the South Australian... The South Australian yeah. um, DEC uh, schools, yep, the yep. public schools. DFE schools, yep. Um, I've seen them called um, PPL, personal learning plans, um, IEP, Individual Education Plan. Um, in the um, Disability Standards for Education, they call them RAP. I reckon that's a better name, but it's the Reasonable Adjustment Plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a student can get one of these regardless of whether there's a formal identification of uh, learning difficulty or... According to all the guidelines. Okay. Mm. I um, think that's really important because... Well, for, for two reasons in my experience. Firstly, getting an identification or a diagnosis is very expensive. Absolutely. can be very expensive, mm. prohibitively expensive. And so we don't want kids to be, um, you know, not getting equity in their schooling because of a financial mm. difficulty. Mm. Mm. And you don't want them waiting for help and yes. support until that process has been gone through, which in terms of teachers identifying that there's some difficulties, parents understanding that and making some decisions themselves, mm. and then the process of actually getting, you know, contact with someone who can diagnose it and then the report. Mm. and Which could take 18 months. Absolutely. You know, if you decide to get an assessment now. Mm. Absolutely. It, it could take you 12 months, 18 months, you know, to get an appointment and, and actually make it happen. So it's important from that perspective, this Imputed. Yes. Imputed. Imputed. Imputed, um, yes. But also from the perspective of um, a lot of parents 
and this isn't a, a, a value judgment, but a lot of parents don't want a label for their child. And so they won't get an assessment because no. they're afraid of getting a label or they don't want a label. Now, we don't want the child to miss out on education or equity in their education because the, the parents don't want that identification. So I kind of think that imputed thing's important because Absolutely. I often come across it as well. I often have people contacting me saying, do I have to have a diagnosis to book in for tutoring? Mm. Yes. But I think it's really important that you don't. You Absolutely. Know, it, and I've it, got quite it helps, a few. but you don't have to. No. And I would never want to think to think that a kid misses out f- on anything mm. because we're waiting, yes. you know, waiting for something official to happen. Yeah. There's also a lot of um, kids that uh, need help and support, but they don't have a disability. They actually don't. Um, even if you go through all the process, they don't have it. They've missed out somewhere along the way. Mm. Um, they've just missed some foundational concepts or, the, you know, their schooling's being a bit interrupted or there's, you know, it could be all sorts of reasons or could have been that they just didn't pick up on it and the class moved on. Mm. Um, so it's not necessarily that kids need support or an IEP because of, you know, it's just because they're not able to access the current year level mm. because they don't have some of the prerequisite knowledge. But, so, they, but they should have one. Yeah. And so where do we draw that line? Yeah, so, so, so a how do we vision. know? Yeah, how so, do we know, you know, because I got a B for my math test instead of an A, yeah. do, I, do I now need an individual learning plan? You know, how do, how do we draw that line? Yeah. It's about the um, curriculum at the year level. So if you can meet the requirements, you know, the benchmarks for the curriculum at that year level, which is actually a C, um, then you wouldn't really need one mm-hmm. um, so purportedly I, if, if yeah. it's only that. Yes. Yeah. And so then... Another question on that, and I, and I, sorry, I'm digging in, but you know, oh, I think okay. these are questions that I hear a lot, and you know, I personally, I think I don't really like a system that waits for a kid to fail before it gives them gives them support. So, absolutely, I think if a kid's been identified as, say, living with dyslexia or dyscalculia or, or a learning mm-hmm. difficulty, they should have a plan put in place, even if they're doing well at school. Yeah, because. Yes. Because they could do better. Well, this is you the, know what I mean. Yeah. Like it, and it's that about just, the equity. I that's think. just brought it up. That potential. So yeah. saying that if they're getting benchmarks that they don't, you know, don't need one. Well, potentially somebody living with a disability, particularly, may be making that benchmark, but they might really be an A grade student. But because of the the way things have been not provided for them, they're actually just kind of you know plateauing yeah see that's a can of worms yeah. because well, as we talk about that stuff all my head fills with all sorts of stuff like me as a teacher having been a teacher saying to a parent look they're doing fine they're passing and a parent going yeah but they could be doing so much better and me thinking oh i've got enough on my plate <laughs> you know yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i think we'd, sorry yeah. i'm starting from the bottom up and when i get up to your child then i'll mm, be able yeah. to yeah. Which, have the headspace yeah. yeah it's tricky isn't it and because when you were saying that as well i'm also thinking okay but what's happening behind the scenes here so let's say we've got a kid living with dyslexia yeah and we know that school is more difficult for them, that they need to work harder. We also know that psychological issues almost go hand in hand mm. with, with having a learning, learning difficulty. Mm. So I think if that kid is keeping up and getting a C or a B, I think what are they doing? How much extra work are they having to do? And is this a bit of a ticking time bomb? Like are they actually overworking doing way too much to keep up the standard. The school and the teacher are going, oh, they're fine, they're mm. getting Bs. Yeah. But actually behind the scenes, they're doing three, four hours of homework yeah. every night. They're the proverbial the ducks on the levels. pond. Yeah, the yeah, ducks, right. you know, with the legs underneath. Going like crazy powering. and on top it's all smooth. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, that's a dependent on the student thing. You know, some kids will just learn to work really hard and somehow for some reason it won't take that toll. And then another student will just burn out. After, you know, a year, 18 months of that effort longer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's very nuanced, isn't it? Like yeah. it's, mm. it's not a individual dried line. It's individual. an individual learning yeah. plan. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And the other, my final question on this starting bit is, is there any harm in one? 
Do like, no harm. You know what I mean? It, mm. Where's the where's the harm in having an individual learning plan? So someone lives with, and we're talking specifically now about kids living with learning difficulties. Absolutely, yes, um, yes. There is no even if they are not failing, mm. we don't need to wait for them to fail. We can put a plan in place because we know that there are things that we can do to make life easier for yeah, them yeah. and make school more equitable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why not? Have that Why not have it? And mm. it just might be that it's only one or two pages instead of ten. Mm. And, and it's just got a couple of easily actionable things on it that do actually make a difference for a mm. student. It doesn't have to be a yeah, it doesn't have to be a book. Yeah. Mm. And then my understanding is in, in South Australia at least, and I imagine it's similar in other areas, that to get special provisions or say extra time in your final school exams or, you know, um, a, a break or have someone scribe for you or whatever, you need to actually show a history yes, of having yes. needing having needed that support. And this is what almost caught me out yes. with our first child because I didn't know about an ILP, mm. had never had one in place. And then I was thinking, okay, we don't have a, a history we can show here. Mm. You mm. know, there's no actual evidence if you shift schools, for example, yeah. mm. and you don't yeah. have any history with you. So I think even just from a purely a, kind of a record yeah. Yeah. They Keeping call it the paper trail. Yeah. The paper yeah. trail. There needs to be paper trail evidence that this has been provided and used and needed by the student so that it's not everyone who just goes, ooh, that would be nice. I'd like some extra time, thanks. I'll just go and apply for that. This is – I don't know if this is the case now, but one um, – Karen Hodgson, uh, one of the ed psychs here, years ago went into BAT um, with Annette Brock at the time and had a number of meetings with the SACE board about this special provision business and to the SACE board's credit back then they changed their tune but what was going on then was yes um, students were being fairly regularly knocked back for extra time in exams um, or a scribe uh, or use of a, a computer yep. during exams and um, and that history was part of it you, know, you haven't got a documented history and um so that was causing uh, lengthy appeal processes for a lot of parents. But, you know, part of the, oh, I guess the unsavoury underbelly of this is I think this idea of showing a history of uh, accommodations or, you know, to put it really simply, a, a history of getting extra time in a test, mm-hmm. right, um, is because there's kind of, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this idea, but, oh, they're just rocking up to year 12 and they're trying to get an advantage yep. with their extra time and whatever. And, and there's something about that that I find just a bit off, even mm. that assertion that someone would do that. So what if a kid finally is identified in year 11 with having a learning difficulty yeah. and someone goes, oh, they're just going for an advantage? Yep. And do you know what? It's often the students themselves I have to talk out of that because mm. they think, oh, it's not fair that I get a bit extra time. I go, mm. well, you've got to understand, you're, this isn't a level playing field. It's like you're playing soccer on a 30-degree slope and you're kicking uphill. Yep. So kids, none of the kids, <laughs> they're actually really worried about that being how people look at it. Mm. Yeah, yes. It is kind of guilty until proven innocent, isn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? That attitude of you're just trying to get extra marks or you're trying to scan the system yeah. is kind of like an assumption of guilt. That's, that's probably what I don't <laughs> like about it. starting yeah. out, yeah. which isn't, really yeah. isn't right, is no. it? And it's all around, it, it leads into all of that... Um, the points you get for ATAR for your university entrance. And so mm. if you're regional, you get extra points. Or if, if you're doing that subject, you get extra points. And it's, oh, that's a rort, you know. Mm. Well, that, was, um, oh, that reminds me, Sue. Sorry, I'll cut you off completely because I'm a tool. <laughs> but anyway, we all know that. Um, at the time, uh, if a student said, uh, I, have anxi- I have anxiety, about around an exam or there's been a death in the family or not saying anyone fake that. But a student would just have to say, I'm anxious about exams and extra time or a rest break would be given. Whereas if the student came in and said, I've got a specific learning difficulty, it was actually harder mm. at that stage. I'm not saying it is now, but that, that was a type of stuff going mm. on and mm. kids with, with you know learning difficulties going, oh, well, how fair is that? You know, mm. my mate's just said he's nervous about exams. Well, he might be. But I'm having to jump through hoops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think in South Australia, our say system, because of people like you, Bill, and, and advocates along the and way. Karen and Annette, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is actually better, I hear, than a lot of other places. So a lot of people listening will probably still be in that situation mm. where 
living with a specific learning difficulty doesn't automatically qualify you for yeah. extra time or you know special mm. provisions in exams. Mm. And it's waxed and waned over mm. the time. South Australia went from being really good in this space to being fairly shabby in this space, to being good again. I don't know where it is now. I haven't yes, had a student yeah, in that yeah. position for a little yeah. while. So yeah. yeah, And the extra time they get, if you don't know your stuff, it doesn't matter how much extra time you get, yeah. you're not going to be able to put it on paper. So it's not this massive, you know, free-for-all. Yeah, a right. bit of yeah, extra right. time is just the extra time you need to process it. Yes, it's right. just yeah. a bit of extra time. It's not like you get three hours for a 20-minute exam. Yeah. Mm. That's right. It's not like that extra 10 minutes is going to make up for the fact that you studied or didn't study. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Or you know it or you yes. don't. That's yeah, right. that's right. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. even part of that might be that, you know, your working memory, you, you can't remember things and you're, you're going to miss stuff, but that's not going to come back to you just because you've got an extra whatever it will be, mm. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, yeah. that's not going to come back. So it's not going to impact. Mm. No. Yeah. So it's a whole difficult area, isn't it? Yeah. That whole area of assessment. And, and I don't think it's really, I've never really seen it addressed any, anywhere really well. Mm. But I kind of think it's a bit of a side issue. You know, I think we yeah. get people get caught up in the extra yes. time for the yeah. exam and yeah. so on. But I think where the rubber hits the, hits road. the road is in the classroom every day. Mm. For me, yes, we need the paper trail and so on. But it's not about that. It's about making the kids' daily life in the classroom, how they learn, what they learn, how comfortable they're feeling. For me, it's about that, mm. you know. But I'm not one that cares so much about, you know, exam yes. results and so on. Mm, mm. I know that's important to a lot of people, but I think that's the more important part mm. of it, which kind of makes me, you know, think, why do we have them? Okay, it's a good question. And so I think we've covered what they are. Okay. And, you know, I think that's fairly clear, but why do we have them? And I wonder, Lily, so Lily is someone who has been... Because she's my second child, so she had the advantage of me knowing about ILPs. So, <laughs> Lily, when- what that means, there aren't as many photos of you in the photo album. And every now and then, when your parents start to lose it, they'll forget your name first. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And then you try and make up for it by inviting them onto the podcast. <laughs> it's okay, Lily, I'm a second child too. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So she had the advantage of me as an advocate going into the school and asking for one. My experience is... Uh, my experience as a parent is that I was the one that had to initiate it. You're right. And I felt some reluctance when I did. Mm. You know, it was like, well, you know, I got a bit of a, a little bit of, not complete pushback, but a little bit of a pushback. But I think as a parent, it's important that you do push for it. But mm. so, Lily, as someone who has had most of their school life with an individual learning plan, mm-hmm. do you think it's been helpful? I think it's very circumstantial. Mm. Like, it it depends very much so on, like, if your teacher actually even follows it. Mm. Because there's been, like, heaps of times where I've had to be like, hey, I'm supposed to be getting more time or I'm supposed to be getting uh, this uh, this assignment, like, cut in half. Mm. And dad's, like, already talked to them about getting all of this. And then they're just like, oh, yeah, but we've already started it now. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, like if I've already done such a large amount, I can't go back. And But then there's, of course, other times where the teacher does actually follow through with it mm. and, like, explain it to you and, like, make you feel okay about it. And that's when it's really helpful. And, Lily, how does a teacher make you feel okay about it? I'm really mm-hmm. interested. Well, um, I think that, you know, if a teacher is explaining a new assignment to the class... Mm. If they were to tell me beforehand, they're like, hey, I'm explaining some stuff that doesn't really apply to you, but like you still pay attention because it will help a bit. Mm. And then afterwards, like straight afterwards, you come and explain the new task to me. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm like, okay, so now I know that I'm not going to be sitting there while they're explaining and getting extremely overwhelmed. Mm. And then afterwards, I'm not waiting there like, okay, so do I start on what they just said <laughs> yeah. or do I like just sit here and fall behind because I'm waiting for them to tell me what I should do? Yeah. You know, so it it's really about how like the teacher goes about implementing it. Yeah. And you mentioned um, some teachers just seem to know one's in place and to just... So 
I've worked with, like Dad I've, and Sue, I've worked with lots of kids who tell stories around teachers um, handling the ILP really sensitively and well. And I've also heard stories of teachers with all good intentions, actually um, without meaning to embarrassing a student in how yeah. they talk to them about the ILP. Is, if, would you have any advice for teachers? I know, I know you're one person in this mix and there's lots of kids with ILPs, but yeah. you got anything on that for us? Um, I mean, for me personally, not making it extremely obvious yeah. that they're doing something different. Like um, I've had teachers um, been like, okay, you have to uh, tell me what the answer to a random times table is to yeah. to leave the class for the day or for lunch or something. Yeah. And everyone else will get like really complex answers and everyone's standing around watching and they'll be like, what's one plus one? Uh-huh. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Well, a window. <laughs> yeah. Like obviously like, all right, that's pretty good. I get to go to lunch. But it's also like embarrassing because yeah. then the whole class is like, oh, like oh. is she stupid? Like why, yeah. is she, why is she getting such like a simple thing? Who doesn't know that? Yeah. You know what and I mean? Gee, that's such a... That's such a line for teachers to walk, isn't it? Yeah. Because the alternative is giving a kid something that's overly difficult. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. But yeah. I, I can understand, Lily, that would have sucked. That yeah. would have been hard. Yeah, definitely. So I think, like, if a teacher is coming up with a new activity or, like, trying to think of an alternative for a kid that's on a PLP, that you really have to think about not just, like, how it's going to help their learning, mm and how they learn, but also how it's actually going to make them feel yeah. and how other people are going to like perceive them because of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that probably gets down the track in terms of the paper planning. You know, when you're sort of, you know, scrolling one of these out or mm. spending however much time, it's probably not, okay, so how are we going to go about involving the student? And mm. look at age comes into it a lot you know secondary kids very different middle to upper primary too you know how implementing a learning plan affects a student Mm. and whether that's actually planned for yeah that's a such a such a good perspective and and that should be kind of written into the document just to remind because that's it teachers like lots of other people, but teachers have, you know, they're jugglers, oh, but mm, they're yeah, not, yeah. not just three yeah. balls they're juggling, no, you know. No, 30. So, mm. absolutely. Plus, all of those 30 balls also have the family attached to them as well. So, they're not, yeah. you know, they're like juggling medicine balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and I think there's a period of your childhood, teen, late primary, where you're working out who you are, mm. where actually that peer perception of you is even way more important oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> than the schoolwork yeah. and yeah, how yeah. you're doing at school. Yeah. And so it's for a period of time at least, it's probably the most important part That's of a PLP right. is working out how to deliver it in a way that doesn't humiliate or, you know, um, yeah. damage yeah. the kid yeah. who's on the other end of it. That's right. And lots yeah. of kids yeah. reject um, any sort of support yes. because it's seen so the what you know the young young kids in primary school having an education support officer or a mm. SSO or yeah. whatever you call your you know associated teacher aid, or, teacher aid the yeah. old the old teacher aid yes yeah, yeah. but um, having them in the classroom with you that's fine when you're quite young but it doesn't doesn't take long before kids don't want that so mm. they'd rather yeah. be withdrawn. Um, because mm. maybe people don't know, yeah. but they still see. Yeah. Um, but they don't want it because of yeah. the way we, the way we do it. Mm. Well, that's the that's the push and pull of being an adolescent, isn't it? You you're trying to work out how you're unique, but you don't want to stand out in the wrong ways. Mm. And yeah. yeah. So yeah. What, what methods have worked best for you, Lily? Like, can you think back to, you know, circumstances where teachers have done it well? Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a scenario while you're coming up with it and interrupt me if anything pops into your head. I've had students tell me that just a teacher quietly pulling him aside and going, now we've got this ILP thing. Yeah. How, how do you want to play this? Has he ever had anything yeah, like that? Definitely. Um, I feel like, again, that can be done quite 
well or quite badly. Okay. Like I've definitely had teachers like while I'm at a table of friends or something come over and stop our conversation and then like tell me how to do, how I'm going to do the assignment. People can hear, uh, people can listen, they learn what I struggle with and like it's a thing that they can talk talk about with, mm, to you, mm. you know, and that's definitely not what you want pointed out at that age. No. And so, but then there's also really good times when the teacher's like lets you know before or after quietly mm. without it making it obvious to other kids that you're yeah. you're like needing some adjustments yeah just try and keep it on the down line yeah and then sometimes they can do that and your friends go are you in trouble yeah, yeah <laughs> what was that about lily <laughs> yeah no yeah but but the 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 what's is it tact it's discretion mm -hmm. yeah is, is that pro yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. And how, how important would you rate that compared to the actual learning plan itself? Oh, it's like 50-50. Mm. You know, like there's there's times that like teachers have spoken to me quite badly before I was diagnosed um, because I wasn't keeping up or I mm. wasn't understanding. And that obviously was like, like caused a lot of anxiety and was like difficult. But so is when you're getting the support and a teacher isn't discreet about it mm. and like all of your peers are seeing that like well from their point of view you're not as smart as them yeah. which isn't true it's yeah. just like you learn in a different way yeah. and so it is pretty much 50 50 mm. yeah that's really interesting isn't it because yes. as teachers i don't think we think so much about that and all of our conversations so far has been about the nitty-gritty of it yeah. yes but kind of leaving out leaving yes. the recipient out of the out of the <laughs> conversation oh you know? it's so easy to go there isn't it yeah to to forget that stuff mm -hmm. because we're, we're going to get here but these things take teachers and mostly in their own time yes um, always in your always own time. in their own time i'd yeah i'll get on my high horse about that shortly you know if it's not it's not a discaster episode if i don't get my high horse about it, anyway. <laughs> um, yes yeah, so teachers <laughs> teachers are um are look teachers are leaving the profession in their droves in droves mm. and the constant message that we're hearing is look if all i had to do was teach it'd be hunky dory now you can argue that writing an ilp in your own time is part of teaching it probably is but yeah there are lots of teachers having to come up with these often with a very low level of understanding around things like specific learning difficulties mm. so they're kind of stabbing in the dark about what goes in this thing which boxes to tick how much to put in and as they write it going do i have a snowball's chance in you know where of actually implementing all of yeah. this yeah yeah and remembering it well there's the other for thing five six seven different kids in my class and what their needs are it's a real juggling act yeah. and that's it? what yeah. lily alluded to yeah. if a teacher remembers it so yeah. all of this conversation about handling it with discretion at least number one they've remembered yeah. <laughs> yes and then they can you know unfortunately maybe get it wrong from there but the remembering's yeah. a big part yes. 30 kids who's got an ilp in some classes a i've teachers of telling me oh, i've got 30 kids in my class and 28 of them yeah have an IEP, an ILP, yeah. particularly if they, any of those students are under the guardianship of the minister in South Australia or are Indigenous students. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes different jurisdictions say if you fall into this demographic, you must have one, mm -hmm. which I think has been possibly I'm – not, I'm not passing judgment on that policy, but I know this has probably been a big part of the straw that's maybe breaking some camel's backs here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So – Kind of wrapping this little bit in a mm. nutshell, what I'm hearing is we've got ILPs. We put what are actually really sensible, smart goals in place, but we don't necessarily know how to make those goals happen. Mm. And so they might just keep getting kicked down the road. Mm. Or even if we do know how to make them happen, we may not have the resources required the to systems, give yeah. the kid that support. Mm. You know, it may be that the school, for whatever reason, doesn't have an intervention program and so we just can't do it that seems like a whole big difficult box of stuff yeah this is a it? very I mean, depressing is... episode so yeah. far <laughs> yeah. yes. that's a really big thing that yes. really a whole school's got to get their head around how we're going to approach this and if we really are going to be serious about having individual learning plans let's be serious about actually giving teachers the tools time and resources to implement them and let's not put something in there that's unachievable because yeah. that kind of 
defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. So I think they're talking about those specific difficulties that might need an intervention is one bucket mm. of what we're talking about. Mm. But I think there's another more general component of an individual learning plan that just is concerned with day-to-day classroom yep. work. So, yes, I live with dyslexia. I need intervention. Let's just put that aside for a moment. But I am now a kid living with dyslexia or dyscalculia in a classroom. I might not even be doing English. You know, I could be doing science mm. or another subject. What kind of stuff is going to make that classroom more friendly for that kid, a, a more comfortable place and more equitable you know, not necessarily talking about specifically this person needs to learn the CK rule by the end of this term or mm. whatever, but just day to day things like extra time. So I mean, that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. So you're saying what's the easy stuff that can make a difference? Yeah, because I think we've been painting a picture of, you know, and quite rightly, I think that this is an incredibly difficult job. I dare say impossible for yeah. most teachers, yeah. you know, in the current system, it's pretty much impossible to live up to the expectations of 28 ILPs in, in your class. Yeah. And I so, agree. You know, yes. it's kind of, and I think when you're in a situation like that, you get overload and you just kind of throw the baby out of the bathwater, don't you? Yeah. You know, that's why you get to the point of saying, I can't do this, just all too hard. Yeah. But if we think more in terms of what's achievable, because those little things that you do each day to make a classroom more um, comfortable for mm. a kid living with a learning difficulty, those kind of things are achievable. Yeah. For example, and I'll just share some things that have really worked for us and Lily can share some of hers. But So I'll talk about my son. A great thing that helped him was the ability to take a photo of the whiteboard. Mm. That sounds so mm. simple, but, you know, kids are not allowed to use their phones in class. A lot of the kids I tutor now have their phones locked away, so they can't even, ha you know, locked away in a security thing, so they can't have it, mm. which kind of makes me sad because I think, oh, boy, I'm glad that didn't happen when my son was at school because mm. what would typically happen is he'd get home, I'd go, how'd you go? <laughs> and he'd say, oh, the teacher said something about something. I didn't get it. I've got this assignment I have to do, but I have no idea what it is. And I'd go, oh, can you give me a hint? Yeah. What was the teacher asking for? What did they think? And he can't quite remember it. But when we got him taking photos of the whiteboard, he could show it to me and I'd go, ah, oh, yeah, oh, I get it. Yep, this is what you're supposed to do. And I could lay it out for him and say, here, you just have to get this done, this done, this done, because I could see what mm. was written on the board. That is so simple. And if you can't do that, then for a teacher just to be able to provide a dot point list mm. on Absolutely. whatever, say, system you've got, whether it's sector or... Seesaw in know, a primary school. Or one of those IT yeah. systems. Here's today's lesson. Here are the teaching points. Here's the assignment I gave to the kids. So as a parent, uh, I mean, this is... This is another problem because parents can't usually access the kids' version <laughs> to see yeah, it. But yeah. uh, as a parent, I can I can help yeah. them. You know, they get home overwhelmed, but yeah. we can sit down and go, oh, okay, here's the assignment. Yeah. Look, you just have to do this and this. Those instructions. Yes. It's a simple thing. Yeah. Because if you're teaching, you've already actually done these instructions, haven't you? Yeah. You, you know, you would think that this so. lesson has been prepared yeah. and somewhere probably written down. Yeah. Is your instruction, your sequence, your worked example, somehow sharing that yes. with someone at home who can help or even a, the kid who can go home and they've forgotten it, but they can review it themselves. Because um, kids with a learning difficulty do come home from school tired and overwhelmed and just not in really any nick to articulately <laughs> communicate, mm -hmm. I guess, a homework task. Um so, and I'm seeing schools get so much better in this space of sending home or putting up on uh, the plat the learning platform, whatever it is, what what has to be done. But a few years ago, Michael, absolutely, that that being able to take the photo of the board was such a game changer mm. for so many of my kids. Um, 
I hope no teachers fell over when we talked about phones in school because I personally <laughs> think one of the best things the department did was ban mobile phones mm. in schools. It is a double-edged sword, though, because mm. for some of our kids it was a it was a real help. But it's an easy way around. That the, the teacher can take a photo of the board and share well, it. That's right. Yes. And, and why yes. share it with everybody? Yeah, that's right. And that's the thing with having the online, the sector or the day map or the whatever mm. you have. If everything's up there, then yep. you've got the visual that you can go back at your mm. own pace. Yep. It's why every single learning experience you go to as an adult you go can i have the notes please mm, you know yeah. and can i have them before at the start so i can annotate them for myself mm. lily um we're talking about homework obviously mm -hmm. what did teachers do for you in light of your uh, plp around that that sort of stuff that helped yep um well again it was different compared to each teacher yeah. like when i was in year six and seven my teacher said that no one in her class was going to do homework mm -hmm. and that she was going to have it like if you're struggling at school then like she helps you at school because if you're struggling at school and you haven't done it and you go home and you're on your own you're still not going to be able to do it yeah and she, she was an amazing teacher with with homework so a kid's yeah. got an ilp and homework is a is absolute nightmare territory a bit like you know, Michael was saying, what's one thing that teachers did that made the homework task clear? So Michael's examples with George, the photo of the yep. board helped. Is there any other things that teachers have done that you think makes a real difference? Um, I can't think of any. <laughs> oh, that's not too good. Um, Nothing. It's been a nightmare. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, I, I think in primary school, something that really helped was homework time rather than a task yes ah. and so don't it's not like you have to get the 20 problems finished for homework tonight mm. we had an agreement that you do 20 minutes homework yeah. and, and no matter how much is done yep. you just cut it off yes yep. okay i forgot about that yes what you get done is what you get done that was really helpful yeah, yeah right. a big de-escalation there of um that whole anxiety yeah. and staying up late at night to get the homework done yeah. for fear of getting into trouble. And then even if you, like, you struggle with it and you've put in, like, three hours just trying to understand this, like, one math problem that you can't get and you go back to school the next day and you haven't done it because you didn't understand it and, you know, the teachers and other students would be like, oh, what, you didn't do it? Like, yeah. that was so easy. Again, oh. it makes you feel stupid. Yeah. You get told off. But you've spent like triple the amount of time that everyone else did on the task really trying to put the effort in. Yeah. Mm. And that's not fair. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you slugged your guts out. Yeah. yeah. No. So that definitely helped when it was like you spend half an hour on it instead of this amount of questions. Yeah. Was it hard, Lily, at, at 20 minutes or half an hour walking away um, and you felt like you had nothing to show for it? You'd not got yes. to the end? Yes. It definitely was hard. Yeah. Um, because it was like, well, there's a reason that I'm doing this. Like, I'm supposed to be doing this work. Don't I, like, need to know all of this stuff that I'm trying to do? Or, you know, but I kind of had to trust dad and the teachers when they were like, no, you can get, like, you can still learn yeah. and do this amount. Yeah. Because you learn differently, yeah. you know? Like, so it was definitely, again, because I'm so lucky that I was able to get that help and then get that reassurance when I was, like, unsure about if I should be doing more or not, you know. But, mm. yeah, yeah, I was definitely lucky to have that reassurance, yeah. Yeah, yeah so time time work has been a big, was a really good one for us. And especially in terms of anxiety. Mm. Mm. There's a whole lot of anxiety, so... You know, getting into trouble for not getting your homework done. I can understand teachers using that as a motivator for the majority of kids in the class. You know, get this work done. You know, you, everyone's running late and you, you kind of give them a serve, don't you, to try and put a rocket up them and, and motivate them to get the work done. But the impact that that has on somebody who's already working, overworking mm. to try and keep up is actually huge yeah and so i think avoiding blanket class statements mm. and kind of pep pep talk speeches that raise the ante um when there are kids in that class who actually that's going to do damage to them yeah. yeah you know what i mean and so i think being a little bit more selective about those 
where the feedback goes where the feedback goes you know absolutely some kids need to be pushed and they need that pressure on them but for yeah. other kids that pressure is exactly the opposite but you of know what michael when you've had a gut full and you're tired <laughs> yeah. and you're low on caffeine giving the class a good old rev up is so <laughs> much fun yeah because while you're while you're revving them up you're planning in your head what we're going to do next <laughs> And sometimes just being just astounded by my verbal fluency as I, you know. Yeah. Using big words. The big words. This, this is not good enough. That's not, they're not big words, are they? Anyway, sorry. Atrocious. Atrocious. <laughs> so that's worked well. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's worked well is having, when it's happened, is having... Um, assignments and projects broken up into smaller pieces. Mm. Yes. Rather than getting the whole big overwhelming assignment in one hit, being able to say, okay, this week we're just going to get, we're just, I just have to get this done. Yep. And I think, Lily, like we had a bit of a routine around that. Yeah. You know, definitely. we'd sit down and we'd plan the week. And so you could have these realistic, achievable yep. goals. Mm. And, and even if you hadn't done all the work, you could feel a sense of satisfaction that yeah. you've done what you had to do that yeah. week to keep up. No, that's definitely helped throughout all of my schooling. You know, like when I was in primary school, when I wouldn't get that, I'd fall behind. And um, then when I would, I'd I'd know what I'm supposed to be doing and it was like achievable mm. for me. And even now, like recently, I had an assignment where the teacher was like, it was like a 2000 word investigation into like the effects of adoption, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, Did you choose the topic? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, each week she'd be like, okay, so like I just need this, this paragraph done and this paragraph is done and this paragraph done and she stretched it over the term and we just did some other tasks like during that time and it turned like a 2,000 word investigation into like, like a half an hour task each week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, like we still, we all got it done and it was really helpful. And Lily, this was for the entire class, this approach? Yep. Yeah, yep. right. It was. And that was also really good because then it wasn't any humiliation or like, oh, you're different sort of thing. Yeah. You know? mm. So that you turned around one day and you gone, oh, it's done. That was literally it. <laughs> and yeah. it's not bad. Yeah, that was it. Like, I felt like I could, I could actually do a really good job of it, that it was up to my potential. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. But you get the same amount of work given to you in one lesson and go home and hear you've got to get this done by the end of the term. Mm. It's mm. like, oh, I think it would be so overwhelming. You probably put it off until... Week yeah. eight yeah. <laughs> or week nine. And then yeah. meltdown. <laughs> and, but and don't we meltdown. do that? Don't we do that as adults as well? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Right. I you, never do that. You, 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 oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you get something that's sort of a massive thing that you need to do and so you procrastinate. Yep. You know, I remember writing reports as a teacher and going, oh, that cutlery drawer needs cleaning. <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> I'll do that first. <laughs> the dog's bum looks dirty. <laughs> It's procrastination because it's such a massive task. It's yeah. the same thing. But yeah. teach them all as if they're dyslexic Well, and everybody achieves. This is really interesting because, Lily, this is what you shared is a really effective strategy for all kids. And as you were talking, I was thinking, yeah, that would be good to put into an IEP, you know, break, break it mm -hmm. into small tasks. And I'm thinking, hang on, this is a teacher that broke it into small tasks for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, just really good teaching has got a role here to play mm -hmm. in making life a whole lot I think making learning a lot more effective. It's not yeah. just about making life bearable. That was a very effective strategy yes. to help you guys take a big task yeah. and do a quality job of it. Yeah, I actually learned something from it. Mm. Like, that's very rare for me to be able to say. <laughs> like, I know that's bad because it's like school and you're supposed to learn. But, like, you, I feel like you adapt to what you know gets you a good grade, yeah. not to what you know makes yeah. you learn. So big, you don't actually learn. Big fat shout out to Sacred Heart College. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well yeah. done. Yes. Okay. We've been talking about extra time. Mm. And so there's a few things that I'm sharing just like from my experience, not just with my own kids, but kids I tutor. I think extra time is a little tricky um, because if I give you extra time for your assignment and you've got five assignments to do, then 
I'm basically now saying to you, hey, everyone else is doing 10 hours homework, but you're lucky enough that I'm going to give you 20 yeah. hours of homework. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> I'm going to give you extra time. And so it's kind, you know, I, I can see extra time to do an, in an exam or in that yeah. kind of testing environment is useful. But extra time to finish an assignment literally means I'm giving you extra work. I think a better strategy is to have a work, uh, an output reduction mm -hmm. from the outset. Okay, we said we're talking about output and we're saying words. Yep. Another way we accommodate is we say to students, uh, this doesn't have to be a 2,000 word essay. We've got to find a way for you to get what you know about this topic out and it doesn't have to be written. Mm. Have you ever been accommodated for like that, Lily? Yes. Okay. Yes, there's been times where... Lots of the time it'll be, um, let's take your words away, let's put it into a video of you explaining, or uh -huh. let's put it into a PowerPoint where you can explain it to us. That can definitely be helpful, but again, it depends on the task mm. because a lot of the time I still have to write and plan out everything that I need to talk about to yeah. get my point across and then do a video or a PowerPoint. So it's actually more work. Right. Yes. Yeah, because I can't just be like, oh, okay, here's the assignment. Yeah, and there's a PowerPoint out of thin air. You know yes, what I yes, mean? Like, yes. it, the same amount of everything and like the process of words is yes. the same. Yes. So the it's the sequencing. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's the sequencing bit. It, still having a plan about what I want to say and in what order am yeah. I going to say it, regardless of whether it's in an essay or a PowerPoint yeah. or yeah. or I'm filming myself teaching the dog. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you've had yeah. teacher interviews? They're usually pretty good. Yeah, because then I can just kind of like question and answer things. Yeah. Then I can show them that I'm I know things, I'm learning, yes. they can see my progress, but I'm not sitting there trying to work out how to spell this word for half an hour. Yeah, yeah. You know? All right, so Lily, could an example be you've been doing the Industrial Revolution and how life was really hard for kids mm -hmm. and I'm your teacher and you've handed me up a 2,000-word thing and you're a bit skinny on a response to how did the Industrial Revolution change life for children in England. Yeah. And I know you know it in your head, so I go, hey, Lily, can I catch you in a bit? Mm -hmm. And discreetly go, hey, Lily, can you just expand on this? Yeah. You've got this answer here. Can you tell me? You know, is there anything else you can tell me about how life changed for kids when they were in factories? Yeah. And then I can just be going, yep, she knows that, she knows yeah. that. Tick, tick, tick. Uh, yeah. It's a lot <laughs> easier because then, you know, teachers will say that and then be like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, because I know I know more about it. Mm. And then I'll go back and I'll be like, wait, but I can't write any more about this. You know, but then it, it's a lot easier even if the teacher's scribing while yeah, you're saying that. Yeah. And then you're still, it's still your thoughts and your words, yeah. but it's not that extra challenge. Yes. So Absolutely. the teacher works out that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know the topic. You can really articulate it well mm -hmm. and they're just kind of moving out of the way. Yeah. That, that writing bit, that mm. transcribing and ideation yeah. part, which is... Well, the ideation is not the difficulty. It's yeah. getting it down. The, yeah, yes. the transcription bit is. Yeah, right. And, and I think as a teacher, you can probably get more I information about how much a kid knows if you can quiz them. Yeah. You can't yeah. quiz yes. an essay and no. you can't say, oh, what do you mean by that? Yeah. And then they say something magnificent and you go, wow, they really get it. Mm. It's just they didn't quite know mm. how to write it because that's mm. difficult. So it's knowing your kids and knowing, I reckon Lily Shanahan's got more to say on this. Yeah. Because she's demonstrated mm. in class that she's got it. Mm. Well, well mm. actually, what I'm talking about is a, an interview instead of the assignment. Right. So, instead, of, so not, yes. and not in addition to yeah, the essay, yeah. so not like a supplementary thing to the essay, but yep. don't write an essay. We're yep. just going to do an interview. See, We're I've just had that do at Sacred Heart as yeah. well. At Sacred Heart, wow. pretty good at, <laughs> at accommodating. Well, yeah. That's good yeah. to hear. Yes. Um, yeah, and it was for drama and you could either write a... Um, an assignment about it or you can just have a group discussion with the teacher and some other peers and she can see like the ideas that you have Ooh. and you still have to prepare for it you still yeah. have to do yeah. all the work 100%. but it cuts out that writing part yeah. which yeah. is very very time yeah. consuming and yeah. for some kids that's how they like they need to write that's yeah. how they process all of their thoughts and stuff yeah. but when that's completely opposing for someone then that's yeah. really difficult which is why I think it was amazing that we had the choice to either talk to her in a group 
or do the assignment. Lily, you just made an incredibly important point. You said for some people, the act of writing helps them articulate and get their thoughts in a row. Yeah. And for some people, it absolutely gets in the way. Can I talk about another common one that you'll find in ILPs? Reduced word count. So yeah. it's very common that you'll see uh, in an ILP, you know, 2,000 word essay, this kid only has to do 1,000 words or 1,500 words. My experience of that is that it makes it much, much harder. Because you've got to condense. Yeah. Yes. How on yes. earth do you do that? How yes. many hours yes. do you spend turning a 4,000-word essay into a 2,000-word essay? Yeah, that's literally what I'm doing right now. I, I can't <laughs> do it. I'm, like, I, I usually have to get dad's help to do it because I, I spend all of this time and effort into putting this research and information that I know into something and then, oh, my God, it's 4,000 words. But then it's supposed to be 2,000 words. But then they've thought they've helped me and reduced it to 1,000 words. <laughs> so now I need to get rid of, like, 3,000 words. So what do you do? You could sell them <laughs> to those other kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got a spare 3,000 for anyone. <laughs> yeah, anyone? So it does, like, the opposite. Yeah. It's, again, more work. Mm. And I'm sure for some kids that, you know, see, for me, I – if I can manage to get information down, it's a lot and I can't condense it. But I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure for some kids it's kind of the opposite. You know what I mean? Like they can't stretch it out. So yeah. it really depends on the kid. Well, having a difficulty stretching it out is usually just not being having enough of the content yeah. in your head. Not enough information. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. You, you know, when I go fluffy on my writing, it's just because I'm padding. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason that sometimes kids are short or a bit skinny on a word count, but most of the time in my experience it is. Yeah. So, Lily, what do you do then? Because you know you've got, you got all this stuff in your head. You've got this, this incredible schema in, in your long-term memory of this topic and you understand it and someone goes, hey, Lily, you've got 2,000 words. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, I over – this is something that I've probably recently learnt rather than have done like over all of my schooling is that – I just put down random words that's in my head. Either like I use a voice thing, so it literally just says what, I th what I'm what i saying. You're recording your own yep, voice. Yeah. Yep. Dictation. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. That word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or um, I'm like, if I'm in class and I don't feel comfortable doing that, I literally just write down as I would say it. And like, if I don't, like, I don't try to sound proper or like, like an actual essay that you would. Yeah, and so it's not academic language, yeah. it's just regular yeah. And I speech. Find, yeah, and I find that that gets it out and then I can go through and get help to um, make it sound yes. proper. Yes. So if you, free, if you say to yourself, Lily, just get ideas out and down, mm -hmm. don't yep. worry about the way they're constructed at the moment mm -hmm. and we'll do the polish later. Yeah. Right. That's how I get all of my mm. work done. Yeah, gotcha. but Having a teacher put that structure in place for you would yeah. be excellent. Yes. Yeah. And some teachers have done it, some teachers haven't. But Definitely. kind of I brought that up because I know how much pain it's caused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lowering a word count. Yes. And another one we've often seen is dot points. Oh, just give me a dot point list. That's, Don't worry about writing an essay, just do skill. it as dot points. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. even harder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, to try and condense your thought. If you have difficulty with written expression, trying to condense a big thought into a single mm. dot point mm. is really tricky. So, mm. so what we're not doing is smashing a teacher who's out of no, of, of, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. Um, we're just saying, look, there are boundary conditions around everything. You know, there are there. Are, it, this is not easy. Yeah. But absolutely, you know, reduce word count has made life easier for a lot of kids. However, just keep in mind that it can also yeah. have an opposite effect yeah. and it, maybe just talk to the student about maybe, mm. you know. Oh, how dare you, Bill. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> how dare you suggest that? I know. <laughs> because there might be a lot of students to just have to just have this conversation with yeah. if you do have a number of students with, you know, IEPs and ILPs and whatever they're called. But, yeah, but as would. a teacher, if you had what you were expecting them to give you in the essay as questions, mm. that would make that process much quicker. Mm. If you already had it, and you could ask that question 
and the student could answer it, you could record them answering it. Mm. Yeah. Play and then back. go, right, boom. Play next it back one. with a checklist next year. Yeah, oh, or yeah. Have, have, have the questions there ready. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. play it back later. Yeah. But you've got that evidence already, so there's no, oh, you're just letting them. Yeah. You know, what was, where's your evidence for Lily always getting A's because she's just talking to you? Um, here it is. Yeah. What, do you, what do you want? Yeah, uh, yes. and, and yeah. by the fact, what are we assessing here? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And if we're assessing her understanding of science, yeah. it's not about spelling it right. It's not about nice handwriting. No. It's not about paragraphing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it okay. could be if that's, that's part all of good. the assessment criteria, but yeah. Yes, yeah. but that that's not assessing the science knowledge. No, no. But it may well be part of the... The so whole. so what we're offering up are not a heap of easy solutions, just things to think about because, you know, we know we've got teachers listening and we've got parents listening and I guess like, you know, you, you get intellectual about any conversation and the answer tends to be this is nuanced mm. and this is highly nuanced, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But teachers are desperate. Uh, under, you know, teachers get into teaching because they want to help and teachers are desperate uh, by and large to, to help kids, you know, reach potential um, – yeah, but uh, it's um, yeah, it's a it's a long game, isn't it? It's yeah. not easy. And for secondary kids, a lot of them haven't been taught how to construct a proper sentence, how to put those sentences into a paragraph, how to put mm. paragraphs together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They haven't actually explicitly been taught. And look, I remember very long time ago when I left school. I had never been taught how to construct, and we used to call them essays yeah. mm -hmm. back in our day. Why oh, don't they call them that anymore? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but back in, yeah. you know, when I, when I went, you know, into teaching, um, somebody just said in an introductory kind of course, well, if you've got a 2,000-word essay, you need 20 paragraphs of 100 words each. Each paragraph needs to have a topic. And you can actually write them in any order, but then just rearrange them for your argument. So you can do some of the easy ones first or, well, that was my go-to, mm -hmm. like almost forever until I learned a bit more. Mm. Um, and you just think even that, that's such a little tiny kernel of advice to not have got that at all in my secondary mm. or in my, my entire schooling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think, well, anywhere from about year three or four onwards, we're asking them to write extended texts. Yeah. So. And uh, well, do watch this space because um, there is a movement around the building blocks of good essays going right back to what's a clause and how do you write a good yes, one? Yes, yes. And then how do you write a complex sentence? Yes, yes. And how, yeah. do you, how do you expand a sentence? How do you combine a sentence? So the writing we'll, revolution. Well, yeah, as well as uh, – and, and that is just a beautiful culmination of all of these strategies that have been around forever. Um, and there are other good resources as well, but that's the Absolutely. big one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so um, – Lily, sorry, it's too late for you, love. Uh, if, you're in, if you're in a certain... No, it's not, you know what I mean. No. Um, but, uh, yes, so we, we teachers getting much better. And parents watching this happen, you're not going to see kids writing full expositions maybe in year three or four. No. But by heck will you see this work on them being able to articulate to you how you write a compound sentence, a complex sentence, how you take two short sentences mm. and combine them to make a sentence with mm. better meaning, what a clause is, what mm. a conjunction is. All, of, a, all of that. And even the fact that a simple sentence isn't just a short sentence. No. It's not about being short. No, it has subject and predicate. Subjects and predicates. And one subject can have more than one action. Oh, you see, this is this is sentence so, porn. So, you know, when, when you kind excited. of... excited. No, sorry. <laughs> you know, when Michael, you... you... Don't cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Lily and I are just looking at each other over here on the yeah. other end of the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you two go. Sue and I started speaking. Did we start speaking in tongues over here, did we? <laughs> <laughs> We've that, already that's, started packing that's up. Word, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's word nerd knowledge. <laughs> and I thought it was rude when you reached over to unplug my microphone, Michael, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, yeah. we've got to get back to this. But, yeah. you know, like, not um, not knowing that when I was teaching, mm, you know, or not, not really getting that and teaching it to kids and going yeah. a simple sentence, yeah, that's a short one with one one of this and one of that, move on, compound is yeah. putting two of those little ones together, mm. and complex is really complex. Yes. All right. Okay, mm. so anyway. individual learning plans. Mm. We've got... Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
<laughs> we meandered, didn't we, Sue? <laughs> They are incredibly important yep. for all the reasons we've discussed. And just this one little sample of Lily, not mm. that you're a little sample, but <laughs> one, one example <laughs> shows sample. what a huge impact it can have with just simple things. Mm. So, we'd not, so, you know, we did get caught up earlier when we were talking about how complicated it is, how mm. difficult it is to be a teacher, and how really those, the formulas for individual learning pl- plans are... Those SMART goals are fairly unachievable in most circumstances in a typical classroom environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we, but we don't want that to stop us no. from doing simple things mm-hmm. that w- are absolutely achievable and will benefit everyone in the class. Mm. Yeah. So things like not giving a massive assignment all in one hit mm. to kids and saying, now get this done by the end of the term. Now, there would be kids in the class that could cope with that. But I can guarantee there'll be a percentage living with dyslexia or dyscalculia or depending on what subject it is, mm. Mm. who would be so overwhelmed by that that it becomes impossible. Mm. Causes a huge amount of anxiety, loss of self-esteem, loss of confidence. And this is not even doing the work. This is just getting the assignment. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. just thinking about how do you make that equitable so it's really mm. thinking about, you know, in our previous episode about people living with ADHD, how easy it is to get overwhelmed by that yeah. massive assignment. So simple things like breaking up big assignments into smaller chumps, chunks, <laughs> helping kids with their planning, you know, giving them that scaffolding to say, this done by this week, this mm. done by this mm. week, you know, draft by here, draft by there. Thinking carefully about extra time and word counts and talking to the kid Mm. and making sure actually we're not just going to put this in here because it sounds like a good thing to be in there, but actually working out whether that's actually a good thing or not. Mm. Mm. Because it'd be pretty difficult for a kid with an individual learning plan to then arc up about the individual learning plan and say to a teacher, hey, (laughs) this isn't working for me. That's a bridge too far, I think. Yeah. For kids, if they're lacking, especially if they're lacking any sort of confidence. Mm-hmm. So or I think it's re- important. Or really understanding their yeah. learning difficulty. Yeah. yeah. Getting that individual plan, yeah. talking to the kid, like yeah. you said, Bill, to say what really mm. works here. Does it actually help you yeah. when yeah. I give you less words? Mm. Mm. Or, yes. Is there another or would way? you prefer to do an interview? Mm. Perhaps having a little smorgasbord of options for yeah. kids. Yeah. Mm. And so they're not feeling humiliated because everyone else is doing an essay, I'll oh, bet you just come over here and we'll have a little chat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I just want to pick up on that, Lily. You, I wrote down here, don't feel comfortable doing that, you said, just in the middle of explaining something. And I thought, we've got to, we've got to go here about when a student, uh, sorry, a teacher offers an accommodation or something that, mm-hmm. and, and you go, oh, right, so um, everyone's going to be doing it this way. But I'm going to be doing it that way, mm-hmm. or I'm going to be in the exam room first, and everyone's going to be walking in on me yeah. already started. Is there any? How do we? I don't know if there's an answer to this. Mm-hmm. This I don't feel. Even if that, even if that thing is potentially really helpful, it's a whole looking different thing, right? Yeah. What? What would? What? What advice would you give to teachers about that? Mm. You know, because when I, yeah, I don't want to look different, but Can I do we, learn differently. But yeah. I don't want to look different. Communication with the kid. Okay. Like, I I don't think I actually saw my learning plan until I was in, like, year 10. You know what I mean? Mm. And there was definitely things on it that I was like, oh, that doesn't help, and oh, that does help. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I feel like if the kid knows why they're being separated and it's explained and it's like, hey, would you feel comfortable if we, like, uh, put you in the room first? Mm. Or... Is there another way that you would like to do this? Would you like your 10 minutes at the start or at the yeah. end? Yeah. You know, mm. stuff like that mm. where the the kid actually knows what is going on and can they can they can tell you what will help and mm. what what doesn't help mm. because they've experienced it. It's them. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's a complicated issue obviously, but it's pretty simple to just be like 
yeah. how do you feel about this? And Lily, you're a really articulate young person. As you were talking, I was thinking, all right, a uh, year five kid or a year four kid yeah. with an IEP and you know, and the teacher goes, what do you reckon? And the kid pretty understandably goes, I don't know. Because yeah. they just haven't had experience of what's worked yeah. and what hasn't. Now, I don't know. Has anyone got any comment on that? Or uh, is it just down to the teacher observing and continually asking the kid, hey, how'd you go with that? that See, I think it's it comes, that word explicit, you know, all the time. And because Lily came from a family where it was talked about where she'd seen some other strategies when people were talking about strategies or they talked well and she grasped that really easily Mm. and felt confident as a person you seem like a really well rounded kid you know you seem really good (laughs) but not all kids have that confidence and they don't when we say what do you think about that it's not because they just go I don't know what you're even talking about. Mm, I don't mm. know what you're offering. Mm. I don't know how that would help. Um, And then they don't want, you know, they've got that peer group. They just want to go and play footy with the boys or with the girls or... I've experienced that. And I feel like it's then as, like, the adult that you you need to take it on. You know what I mean? Like, that's obviously not always possible. But, you know, you say okay, they don't know, I'm going to try this way and I'm going to try this way and I'm going to try this way and I'm going to really pay attention to how, you know, um, how well I think the task has displayed what they think, how their attitude has been towards it, you know, Mm -hmm. really paying attention so that even if the kid doesn't know what does and doesn't work, the teacher can. Yeah, so mm-hmm. some trial and error. Yes, It'll be the scientific definitely. method. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I'm going to try giving... One variable. Yeah, let's yeah. try giving some extra time for this. See like, how that goes. Yeah. The anxiety yeah. levels drop. Yeah, Do the, true. Does the work... Yeah. I'd forget which variables I've given to which kid. I'd have well, to take good notes. For, you do but, it for the class. Well, you see, again, here we go. Again, this, what works for... Yeah, what can make life kid. easier for a kid with a learning difficulty yeah. can... What, what does it matter yeah. if for this assignment... The, all the, the assessment is going to be an interview mm. for everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, everyone will benefit from it. And if you see that that really works for the kid living with dyslexia or learning difficulty, then maybe keep that in place for them. And then it's not an odd thing. But what about mm. when that kid lands in a written exam mm-hmm. later on? You know, I mean, that's absolutely a cracking way to assess um in that mode but at some point the student is going to be well i guess unless there's a really good accommodation in the exam but if mm-hmm. the kid's doing the sace there mm-hmm. there are going to be some fixed hard mm-hmm. lines around how it gets done you know and you've got your net plan leading up to it hmm. yeah yeah that's right and you wouldn't want them to have never done anything and then hit sace which because you just set them up to fail absolutely mm. so they need some practice they need some normalization around yeah. mm. around Definitely. the testing but the stakes for those testings that's what we need to look mm. at yeah. and we can't get it away from the stakes mm. no um, that's right we need to we need to manage that and maybe mm. be a bit of a gatekeeper okay yeah. the stakes here guys mm. i just want to see if i've taught you this but yeah. that, that's understanding that as a teacher, yeah, you know, whereas right. I've got somebody, you know, on my back to give them data. Mm. Um, mm. So, yeah. And then that's, that's back to where other, we, what we were talking about at the start, isn't it? Yeah, there's yeah. These, it's our understanding. There are these exams, you know yeah. what I mean? There's yes. this standard that you have to meet and it drives so much of what happens in the classroom. Yes. That even now we're saying, oh, yeah, but what about when, you know, one day they'll have to do a written exam. So Mm. what does that mean? Therefore, they can't do an interviewed assessment. You know what I mean? It's quite tricky. So Mm. I think the approach to that is about being explicit. Yeah. So, yes, here's our goal is to do a written exam. We know that that's the goal. But along the way, there are things you have to learn in order to do that. Mm. So you're doing a book study, for example, and the ultimate goal is an exam Mm. or a written report or whatever, but why not along the way have interview questions, have Mm. a different Mm. approach along the way that means they can access the knowledge faster, keep at pace with the the class. So the learning. Yeah. Yeah. So the learning still happens and then, yes, I think that will still put them in a better position when Mm. it comes to the final exam 
to do the work because the opposite to that is, okay, so let's say I give you first part of this assignment instead of doing an interview, I'm going to give you've got to write an essay, an essay report mm. because that's what the final result's going to be. So, you know, let's prepare you, let's write several reports as practice. Mm. The problem there is a kid living with dyslexia may not ever get that first report finished. Or dysgraphia. Yeah, yeah. Mm. may not ever get past yeah. that first report because it's too difficult and you've jumped straight to the end mm. outcome at the start. But give them four goes at doing an interview and, hey, you only have to write a paragraph each week, then you're, they're keeping up mm. with the curriculum, mm. they're keeping up with the class, and sure, there'll be a written result at the end, mm. but we don't want that to stand in the way of them making progress mm. The intended the learning. Mm. The yeah. intended learning. Yeah. What, are we, what are we trying to teach? What are, what's the intended learning here? Yeah, and it's, Is yeah. it always... And obviously, if you have a class of 30 kids, the quickest and easiest way to identify that is to get some written things and then look at it later yeah. but mm. that's not always for all things if, no. if we can learn some other ways and you know teachers are open to learning but they need time to learn oh no, yeah. they do yeah. yeah and and they're not given the time to learn no no yeah there's another there's another one lily there's these things called exemplars where teachers will give students an example of another student's work yep. that has absolutely hit every criteria yep Got any comments on that sort of thing? I love that. Right. Yeah, I get that for web design currently and it's so helpful because I can read a document that's like, you need to do this and you need to do that and I won't understand it. Mm. But then I can look at an example and be like, that's what it means by doing that, uh-huh. you know? And then obviously it's still difficult. It's year 12. But you, you yeah, gotta, yeah. you got to figure out how you can use it in a different way, how like to display what you're thinking. But it is good structure to show me personally how yeah. how the um the kid who got the A yeah mm. how or the, the kid end who product. got the A used used the planning mm. like mm. used what the teacher gave you yeah. to do well so that's yeah. been a helpful thing yes that it has. that that yeah it's um it's almost like you know if you look at it from a cognitive load perspective it's a uh, here's how an expert has done it mm-hmm. let's break that up. And get you thinking like how an expert does it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Or, or I say to you, Bill, your task is to build a house, mm. but I'm not going to show you what a house looks like before you start. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. what, how, yeah. how, what hope have you got? Yeah. yeah. So, but I am just going to tell you, you yeah. need lots of wood, you need lots yeah. of nails, you'll need some yeah. power tools, yeah. and you need to use them appropriately. Yeah. Mm. And I yeah. will be digging holes and sticking wood in them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yep. I think it's a I think it's essential to know where you're going. One of the most difficult things is understanding what to do in yeah. the task. Yeah. Now we have had occasions where Lily has come home and said, "Hey, here's this task I've got to do. I have no, I don't understand it." Mm. And so I say, "Okay, give it to me." I read the entire the task instructions and I have absolutely no idea. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. oh. This task oh, yes. is, you know, I have, oh. I have no idea. International baccalaureate <laughs> yeah. assignments, I don't even understand them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I just don't get it. And we've even used ChatGPT mm-hmm. where we've put in the description of the assignment and said, can you explain this to us because we can't understand it? It was pretty good, yeah. actually. Yeah. It said, oh, this is asking you to do this, this and this. But we actually needed that those instructions decoded yeah. for us yeah. because they were so poorly written, to be honest. And, and these even haven't even come from teachers. They've come from yeah. SAIS. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Usually if <laughs> or, they come from teachers, you can understand them better. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And, so, and so having the exemplar mm. makes that much easier to interpret and understand. Yeah. So right. if you have the instructions and the, and the exemplar and when they're using some gobbledygook mm. term... To describe something, there's so many of them that it's are like so. It's like having Google Translate. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Mm. Like you know, I can't think of an example, but you know, show your evidence of you know in this paragraph, you must show your evidence of post blah 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 learning. And I'm like looking up online. What does post this mean? And there's no definition of post, it anywhere. Post structuralist. Yeah, then it's some <laughs> education term. Yeah, that's indecipherable. So, you know, oh. so having the exemplar helps. Right, yeah. I'm going to chuck yeah. this one in there. 
But doesn't that stifle the students' creativity, Michael, if you tell them exactly how a good assignment will look? I've got the answer to that, by the way, by the way, but I want to go here because some, some, this whole idea of teaching creativity, I know we're meandering. Hmm. But also, are you? how are you going to plan for marking hmm. if you're allowing, if you're saying that stifling creativity, if you're looking for this but not telling anyone that's what you're looking for? Hmm. Yeah. You know. It sets kids up to fail. Hmm. It does. Yeah. I've got a bit of a controversial answer to that. Go. I I don't think that creativity is going to help you. Mm, I, I think yeah. creativity is not what I you want the kids to have because yes. my personal experience, I'm a creative person. Whenever I've been creative in an assignment or a report or an essay, I have failed dismally <laughs> because the teacher has said, you haven't proven this point, yeah. this point, this point and this point. Yeah. It, in fact, it took me a long time to learn that actually they don't want me to be creative. Oh. They just want me to regurgitate the yeah. answer. Oh, you know, you, you have to be their it. version of creative, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to be even more controversial <laughs> and say there is a fair bit of compelling evidence you cannot teach creativity. Creativity is just a result of how much knowledge about a topic you've got stored up top. Yeah. Now, so you've just written Cooking a Recipe. I, Go. Did, I did write for Cooking a Recipe. <laughs> now, if you get a new recipe for something... How creative can you be? If you don't know how the re original recipe works and tastes and looks and smells and makes, so, and I'm no, I'm no chef, but I'd cook it the first time exactly the way the recipe's written. Mm -hmm. And then you, you eat a, you, the cooking process and then you go, I could have chucked a bit more of this in there. I could substitute that for that. I can get creative when I've got the knowledge. But mm -hmm. you can never cook an omelette with snails. <laughs> I would never. You've got to, you've got <laughs> to get the omelet. basics right. You, yeah. yeah. You need eggs. <laughs> yes. So knowledge. You, if you don't have the knowledge, and that's a, mm. what a lot of the time we're trying to demonstrate and ask kids for, is have I given you the knowledge? Can you, you know, can you regurgitate that knowledge or can you express your understanding um, now, as you go up in the school, you'll use some of the knowledge you had to be more creative about things. But mm. if you don't have the knowledge, you can't be creative. Mm. Mm. So you are creative from a space of a good foundation yes. on how to do something. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. You know what you can change and what's absolutely essential to not change. Mm. Well, how did we get here? Well, oh, we're cooking <laughs> even. Okay. So I kind of think of it like this. How much support does a kid need? So if we're thinking about an individual learning plan and we, want to, and we get away from the formulas and mm. so on, all mm. the things we've been talking mm. about, boil it down to what does it mean? And, you know, you're saying isn't that stifling their creativity mm. and, you know, we might not want to do an interview because ultimately they've got to do an essay or a report and, you know, that's not helping them. Mm. So I kind of think the rule of thumb for me is what support do they need as much as they need to be successful. Okay. That's it. Mm. And nothing is too much if that's what they need to be successful. But you can have too much in an IEP or an ILP. Oh, too many things, yeah. yeah but I'm talking in general, the purpose of this yes. is for the kid to succeed. Yes. Yes. And so if a kid is not succeeding for whatever reason, diagnosed, identified or not, mm. what do we need to put in place? Yep for them to succeed. And that could be just a small t two or three things? It could be. But if it means they're not writing, they're presenting instead, mm. means they've got a lower word count, means they've got more time, mm. so be it. Yeah. Because that's what they need to succeed. And if they don't get what they're given, what they need to succeed, we need well, to they never it. will. <laughs> yeah. Will they? I mean, it, yeah. it can't, for me, that's what it boils down to, this mm. equity is... Forget about the system. Forget about the exams. The, you know, we know they're there, but day to day, what do I need to give this kid for them to be succeeding to and thriving forward. in my class? Mm. And if that means i got to give them a photo of the whiteboard, if that means i got to write down absolutely step by step what they got to do to get an assignment finished, if that's what it takes, then... I think that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. And what's coming into this conversation is why wouldn't we do that for all students anyway? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I think we've given absolutely no hard answers no, about we IEPs, have we? but we've probably but, confused people. Well, <laughs> what have we done? I think Lily's given us the best oh, results. Absolutely, my word. Yeah. I think absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Lily, actually, what do you? Yeah, come on, Lily. Everyone's going to get the right. <laughs> Summarise it. Great for discast. Us. Yeah, wish you let Lily talk more. <laughs> 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 no pressure, Lily. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. We'll just write a report for us on this. Yeah. <laughs> In a thousand words. Is there anything that popped just into your head, Lily, while we were rabbiting on? Well, I think that we haven't come to an answer because there is no one answer. Oh, there that it is. It, it really depends on the teacher's workload, mm. how the teacher works, what the student needs and how the student learns. You know what I mean? There's no answer that can cover mm. all of it, which is why it's so confusing. Mm. Well, that yes. was tidy. Said, yeah, yeah, that's right. That was tidy. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. Not much more to say. Where do we go? <laughs> I, I just want to, j- look, I'm going to get all industrial. I, I, I really do want to see teachers been given release time to write these things and I yeah. don't think teachers should have to write them alone. I think they need to be written in conjunction, obviously, with a student, the parent, and also a learning specialist if, mm. it, if there yeah. is a learning difficulty involved. I think this stuff is being glossed over, wallpapered over, and it has become a box-ticking exercise yep. in schools. Yeah. And that is just wasting everybody's time. We've got to be yeah. serious about these documents, I think. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, mm. that's, that, there's, you, there's, there's the rant. Yeah. Yeah, you, we have to do them. Yes. But like you said right at yes. the start, Sue, what's the point of yeah. putting in a, a plan and a goal if there's no knowledge or skill or resources to actually mm. achieve it? Mm. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is yeah. completely pointless. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of um, teachers are having to put in for the what they call the NCCD. Mm. So every school in Australia has to submit their... It's called the Nationally Consistent Collection of Data Mm. on Students with a Disability. And so they have to they have to have the evidence, they have to have the um, the dis the disability identified, they have to have the level of support. So there are real parameters around that and they have to classify that disability, like I we talked about earlier. Um, so that part is a a data exercise. Mm. Um, so that's sort of all over the overshadowing some of the what's really going to help Lily, you know. Mm. Yeah. But that mm. doesn't have to. But I guess it's just our way of understanding it, and we all come at that for a different point. But I think hearing Lily's point of view and going, this is this is really what it is for me every day, mm. and you know, those great insights mm. over that time, Lily. I think that's. Probably a big mm. thing for for people and yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It's been a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been quite a big thing to get your head around, isn't it? Mm. Yes. And it, you know, honestly, personally, this has been a a battle with yeah. with schools. Uh, and I like I am not someone who who would go in and. Uh, you know, abuse a teacher or blame a teacher. Mm-hmm. I don't. Having been a teacher, I know how hard it is and that everyone's doing their best, but it's a battle against the system, mm. you know what I mean, because it's not really set up to support it. Mm. I would agree. It, yeah. It's tricky. Mm-hmm. It's really hard. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's difficult to come to a concise conclusion because it's a bit of a mess. Yes, yeah. <laughs> isn't it? Yes. We're not doing yes. this well. Yes, no. And if we were, if we were doing more in kids' early years, if we if we knew what to do, some of that would have been, you know, we could get it going if we understand what to do. Mm. Um, so some schools and and places are probably, you know, a little bit ahead of the game oh, no doubt. in that area. Mm. And if we can start there, I think it's not unachievable Mm. it's just at the moment it's the big dump of the assignment at the beginning of the term Mm -hmm. Um, if we can break it down Mm. and if schools can break it down and go you know what some schools have started trying to do that and and doing an awesome job job. and one day maybe one day we'll be actually teaching teachers what to teach and how to teach it yeah in pre-service 
before they hit the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, well, yes. that's the dream. Hmm. For me personally, the reason why I know it can work and why I know it can happen is because we've had chalk and cheese experience in, in Lily schooling. Mm. So, you know, big plug for Sacred Heart. Mm. When she went to Sacred Heart, the whole world changed for us. And they are not doing anything... Grand, world uh, like, yeah. You know, it's not huge. a magic program. It's yeah, not yeah. like the teachers there have to work harder than every other teacher because they've, you know, got a good system in place. They have a good system and it's yeah. made a real tangible difference yeah. to Lily's school experience mm. and they haven't been super time-consuming, super difficult things to implement in the school. It has just been around the things we've talked about, yeah. that yeah. talking to the student, breaking things down for them, making it simpler. And my experience is uh, at Sacred Heart, the... Um, the big difference has been that as a school, they've been proactive. Mm. In the other schools we've been in, I've had to be the nagging parent going in and saying, oh. hey, what about this? What about that? Or you've given Lily this, but her ILP says this. Mm. You know, sometimes as a parent, you've got to fall back on the ILP because, you know, mm. that's the document you've got. Mm. It's been the other way around at Sacred Heart. You know, they've been reaching out to us. Mm. They have in place a regular review and Mm. Um, opportunity to meet and talk to the parents say mm. how's it going is it working for you do we need to change it that it's not that hard to do but yeah. Lily from your perspective it's made a huge difference it's hasn't made it? a huge difference. oh wow that's fantastic yeah. no definitely going from um like mum and dad having to go into some of my past schools and being like you know how I learn you know what I need you tell us you'll do it and then nothing changes from like like and now it's like we we get like weekly emails that's a survey of how you're doing and then if if it's not if you're not doing so well then like the leader of your like head of house comes and talks to you oh. and like like that and the survey will include things like uh your sleep schedule like your mental health how comfortable you are with other students how comfortable you are going to teachers for help how your learning is and like it's just like a weekly email that you send out you know what i mean like it's not like a huge thing but it i feel like that's a good way for the school mm. to keep track of how each student are doing and it's that's involving great. the yeah. student yeah, yeah. yes yes yeah. And, and there's probably lots of schools who are yes. doing that yeah, so yeah. we've got to remember that you know we we sort of make some global statements but we're not hiring anyone with no, the same no. brush so no. there's probably lots of good work going oh so, yeah. look there, there is and and um and we have no commercial agreement with sacred <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's where lily goes and uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's like so good to hear yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bleep out the name yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no we shouldn't because are I we think... open to a commercial agreement no, 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 no. i think no, no i think a school needs a pat in the back where a pat in the back is due yeah. yes so yeah yeah mm. yeah Mm. Okay. Well, excellent. Thank you, Sue. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Lily. We're going to put as much information as we can up on the website. So, I've got a little example individual learning plan, An like exemplar. a like and a see. template. Mm. It, it's not something that I'd say you would use because it's kind of like a catch-all, but just to give people an idea of the kind of things that might be helpful to yep. put in an individual learning plan. Yeah. So we'll put as much information there as we can, show notes, links, as we usually do. Mm. We'd love people to comment mm. on yes. the posts and ask questions because it always, I always learn more when mm. people ask questions. Mm. Um, follow us on social media. Um, and thank you for listening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.